This is a very quick run through on the heart dissection. The only way to do well in this question is to include lots of details. Imagine you're a flight attendant giving the safety talk at the beginning of your flight. You show physically where everything is and how everything was done. The first thing you do is draw a good diagram. In fact, draw two. Draw the outside of the heart and then draw the internal structure. Next, you're going to explain how you determined the front of the heart. The front of the heart was more rounded than the back. The back was actually slightly flat. You could also visualize those coronary arteries wrapping around the front of the heart. But it was ultimately feeling the ventricle walls which determined the front of the heart. You could feel the much thicker left ventricle wall. So once you have explained how you determined the front of the heart, now you have to discuss the vessels. This is where a good diagram comes in handy, where you can show the aorta and the vena cava. So it's not really good enough just to say that you found the aorta and you found the vena cava. You have to say that you inserted a blunt probe into both to determine that they were actually going into the proper atria. Next, you label the pulmonary artery and you label the pulmonary vein. And you explain how you inserted a blunt probe to ensure that they actually were the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. Now you actually commence the dissection. Dissection number one, or cut number one, led into the left ventricle. Cut number two opened up the left ventricle even more, and you immediately notice the thickness of the wall. In the left ventricle, you also notice those strings, those heart strings, the chordae tendineae, and they were attached to the papillary muscles at the base of the left ventricle. And you know that the function of those chordae tendineae is to anchor the valves, to anchor the bicuspid valves, to prevent them flapping up back into the left atrium. Cut number three was into the left atrium. You noted how small the left atrium was, and you also noted the two flaps of the bicuspid valves. You could add in at any stage that you noted the septum, the wall separating the left-hand side from the right side of the heart. Dissection or cut number three and cut number four they led into the right ventricle and opened up the right ventricle. Once again, you noted those chordae tendineae, those heart strings, they were also in the right ventricle and they were attached to papillary muscles found at the base of the right ventricle wall. So the purpose once again of those chordae tendineae is to anchor the flaps of the tricuspid valves to prevent them flapping back up into the right atrium. Cut number six was into the right atrium. And in the bottom or the floor of the right atrium, you noted that there were three flaps and these were the tricuspid valves. Cut number seven was along the aorta, opening it up. And this was the only way to visualize the three flaps of the semilunar valves. Above the semilunar valves, at the base of the aorta, is the exit point for the coronary arteries. And we actually squirted a little bit of dye into this. Cut number eight was into the pulmonary artery. And this was another way to visualize the three flaps of the semilunar valves in this artery. So remember, details, details if you get a question on this. And please don't get tricked. Bicuspid is the only set of valves that have two flaps. All the others, the semilunars and the tricuspids, all have three flaps. And don't forget to mention the chordae tendineae. There you have it, buddies. Leaving Cert Biology paper is tomorrow afternoon. The very best of luck to you all. Just do your best on the day. That's all you can do and have a great summer. It'll be okay. A very special message now to my particular sixth year biology class. It has been a pleasure and a privilege and check out the candles, buddies.